Hello and welcome to another Dev Diary for Mayo and Texas 3.0. And uh, this is another cracker, hence why I'm using the same thumbnail, because 3.0 still looks amazing. So uh, one thing before I crack into this one, if you watched the previous video, uh, I did make some errors in that that the devs have corrected me on. So um, I said that, well, we'll start off with an easy one. I said that um, they'd been working on Mayo and Texas for over half a decade. And technically, technically I was correct. They have been working on it for more than half a decade. Uh, it's actually been about 12 years. So um, I also said that um, there was a list of products being produced in Cairo and that was also incorrect. It was actually the sustenance tab for all of the Egypt node and Cairo was selected as it's the center of that node. Um, I said De Gracia was being reworked into the estate system, um, whereas what's actually happening is the clergy are being added to the estate system, not all of De Gracia. De Gracia is freaking huge, so obviously it's not all going to be in the estate system. Um, and then the big one, um, I said that trade flows both ways, which was a bit of a simplification. Trade still flows as normal, but goods will flow both ways. So the goods produced in uh, a, a province will transfer upstream uh, from that node and downstream and that sort of way, but trade still works roughly the same way. Um, so yeah, that is the corrections I want to make on the previous one. And now we'll get into this dev diary, which is also freaking awesome. So um, basically we're going to be talking about uh, population, um, class, growth, and migration, which is all quite interesting stuff. So uh, first off, we'll have a look at this picture and we can see that the provincial population of the province, you can see the total amount split by rural, urban, and notables. And then it also shows you the natural change going up by 0.631,000, uh, including the in immigration and emigration. So that's very interesting stuff. Um, apparently, Crimea is not doing so good because it's emigrating quite a lot of people out. I mean, it's still growing, but there's a lot of people leaving. Um, then obviously you see your rural population with slaves, peasants, freeholders, nomads, each having their own natural change and um, migration. Let's just call it migration. Literally, no nomads are immigrating into Crimea. So, yeah, I, just the way that this information is laid out, it's super easy to read. Uh, you can see exactly what's what the important parts are immediately. Um, it's just really well laid out. I'm quite impressed with it. Um, so, moving on to class. Uh, populations are divided into units called classes. Those are the orange ones here. Uh, each class represents a significant and historic role which were played by people in this era. Class could be a rural slave, freeholder, burger, artisan, noble, etc. This was made possible when we disentangled population from development, something which our long fans may have noticed with 2.5. Yeah, that was the um, heresy update. So 2.0 changed development into population, and then 2.5 changed it so development was development, but it wasn't click a button, get more. It was um, the population and the buildings in the province both impact your development. And that made a lot of sense because if you had a province, a lot, a lot of India was like this. If you had a province that had ridiculous amounts of population, but it was all rural and there were very few buildings, no infrastructure in the province, it's really not worth all that much. But the um, to take it in a war cost an awful lot. So yeah, I, I'm a fan of this, this that change to 2.5, and I'm also a fan of this change here as well. A uh, population system and its many scripts are built uh, on and built to support what, we, what each class can and should do. Classes and their exact effects and structure will be the topic of another dev diary, and I'm looking forward to that one. So, growth. Population has to grow, the, uh, the most fundamental aspect of any population system. In 2.x, population growth was handled by a logistic growth model. The idea was that as time ticks on, population slowly grows towards the ideal point with a nice logistic curve. It was a good model, but it had flaws, the greatest of which was the population didn't decline naturally. The entirety of POP was built around natural growth and exterior forces to decline. Things like being sieged, famine, um, plagues, that kind of thing. 
The other notable flaw was that populations could not ever experience population booms except in the exact middle of their ideal population, which is not entirely historical either. Yeah, so something like, well, for instance, um, the Byzantine influx into Italy uh, when, uh, when Constantinople fell, that wasn't really modelled at all. So maybe this will now model that kind of thing, but not in a railroady kind of, oh, Byzantium has fallen, here, have a, an event where you get whatever. More of a, oh, this population has just been completely conquered, and these people don't want to live here anymore because we're living under someone with a different religion, so now I'm going to try and go somewhere else. Maybe that's a thing, I, I don't know, this is just me speculating. Um, so, in 3.0, we did our best to unify the various requirements under a single model. Each class in 3.0 has a birth rate and a death rate, which determines how many are born and die each year. Then these birth rates and death rates are modified by how much of their life needs are fulfilled, as discussed in our previous dev diary. Uh, if their life needs are under-fulfilled, then they have less births and die more. If they are over-fulfilled, then they give birth more and die less. The result is a net population growth or death rate. That's... Guys, we're, we're getting Victoria 3 in, in EU4. That, that's basically what I'm seeing here. This is, this is incredible. <laughs> this is awesome. Um, if only they could have made a new um, window in the, in the top bar thing where you could uh, you know see all your populations like that and the graphs and, and pie charts and stuff. Oh, imagine, imagine. Um, the new model has many benefits. Firstly, we can directly simulate the effect of resource constraint on population growth rather than abstracting that part with a logistic growth model. When food is scarce, people die. I'm glad that they added this part because logistic growth model, I don't know what that fucking means, but you know, it's apparently really good. No, no, it's apparently not as good as what we've got now. That's great. I like it. Improvements are good. Yes. Uh, when people are crowded together, d disease takes its toll and people die. Basically, so many ways to die. Sounds very medieval. Uh, and with death comes naturalization, natural population decline. This means that areas can experience negative population growth without any catastrophic cause. This was not possible in 2.x. All that could be done was that growth comes to a stop or declines to a serious incident. As such, famine is no longer its own system. Thank God, because I hated looking at the famine map. Um, but an intrinsic element of growth itself. God, that's awesome. The plague system still exists but will be far more rare occurrence, also thank god for that, uh, with equally higher impact. God damn it. <laughs> Alright, well, uh, common disease will be handled within the growth and death system. But KJH, which is, which is this guy, um, uh, where, where am I going? Some of you may ask, is all this grim and, this is all grim and good, but doesn't that fail to represent that some places might not have enough food but lack job opportunities? Shouldn't they still, still see a decrease in population? That is very well and true, my dear viewer, and that's why population can migrate now. Yes, population migration. I have been looking for this for so long. I thought it was going to be a part of 2.5, but oh, we're getting it. We're finally getting it. I love it. I love it. Um, yes, in 3.0, populations can move. The static pops of 2.x have been left behind by the process, probably because they couldn't move. Nice, nice. I see what you did there. It was nice. In 3.0, those features are built in from the start. Populations can migrate to other provinces based on available opportunities or be promoted and or demoted in their own provinces depending on socio-economic circumstances. Let's start with migration. It can be defined as a movement of people from provinces where gravity is below population size to provinces where gravity is above population size. Gravity is individual to each class and represents the op uh, occupation opportunities a province has for a given class. Gravity is calculated directly from the employment rate, which is a byproduct of the labor market system also outlined in the previous dev diary. Therefore, a province which lacks labor will attract migrants from provinces that have saturated labor. Of course, gravity will also consider whether a population can't feed itself. That will obviously take priority in most cases. Migration is one side of how classes move, but it's not the only one. While migration handles lateral movement, we also need vertical movement. This is where motion comes in. Motion, yes, there we go. Class motion is the sum of promotion and demotion. You can view it as a bankrupt artisan deciding to go out to the docks to do hauling work or a wealthy burger coming, uh, becoming more and more aristocratic. There are specific conditions for each class which enables or disables their movement to other classes. 
The main factors in this process are largely property, luxury fulfillment, comfort fulfillment, and knowledge fulfillment. Luxury... This just sounds like a dev diary for Victoria. Like, seriously. It's... Oh, it's so good. So good. For example, a peasant can now turn into an urban resident. It first requires that the peasant being unable to find employment as a farmer or other labourer. If you want to build cities, then enclosure would be a great way to achieve it. Urban residents can also turn into peasants when their life fulfillment is low, which would represent people fleeing from cities to avoid starvation. Again, the exact needs of a class will vary, and that will be covered in more detail in the upcoming classes dev diary. Hopefully this provides a solid overview of the population system for 3.0, with the three key systems described above, which were growth, migration, and motion, we were able to create a population architecture that is both dynamic and emergent. It reacts to economic changes, it empowers both growth and decline, and gives many opportunities as well as downfalls for players to enjoy. Oh god, yes, that's so nice! I am very much excited about this. Ah, oh, yes. So, having a look at these pictures as well, why don't we? Um, Kiantang? Kiantang? Hyantsu? I don't know these provinces really that well. Is that like Shanghai? Seems like Shanghai. But yeah, the population is huge. It's growing by about four and a half thousand per month. No, that would probably be per year. I would imagine that was per year. Mm, yeah, it would have to be per year. It'd be too much for a month. But yeah, um, you can see all the stats there of how it's growing and what percentage of your uh, province is urban, 48.8%. What percentage of urban population is slaves, 5.1%. Oh, so good. I like it. I like it a lot. And then obviously we have here Damascus and we can see it's got a population of almost a quarter million and it's going up by 2.1 thousand per... I, I guess it's a year. It's got to be a year. I'm just going to call it a year. I might be wrong. That might be um, something that I have to correct in the next one. I don't know. But yeah, I'm very much looking forward to this. I did pick out some uh, notable developer comments from the comments section. So uh, we'll have a look at those now as well. So, um, any thoughts about uh, the more transient population, sailors and hangers-on in port cities, for example? So, um, uh, where is it? Is this what I was looking for? I think it was. Did I screw up? <laughs> I thought I had the right one. I think I had the wrong one. There we go, this is what I was looking for. So, uh, the number of classes have a linear... In is it? Yeah, there. We can't add more classes, so the ones that we've got in 3.0 to start with is going to be what we have. We can't add more. I say we, but it's not really me. we, it's it's they. Um, so yeah, we can't add any more classes than the ones that are already in because um, memory usage and script execution time, whatever that means. Um, next one I have here is the performance better than past versions. So they're not talking about performance per se. Uh, they have speculated a little bit, but they're not giving any kind of solid, oh yes, this is going to be better. Um, but as you can see here in the last line, it would break their hearts to release anything with a performance of 2.51, which yeah, I totally agree with it would break my heart as well. Because 2.51 is unfortunately probably the worst version that I've played so far for performance. It's really not that great. I love everything that's added, but the performance is not, it's not there. So I'm definitely hoping that this is going to be better. Uh, next one. So um, is it going to include colonial migration? Um, and KJH says, there's no plan on colonization. Um, but then Vinefin here says, migration system handles colonized provinces just fine. It's meant to handle transcontinental migration and all that. With respect to the colonization mechanic, there is no plan which then Malorn expands upon... I could have sworn I had this, but I don't. Is it at the bottom of this page? There. Uh, keep in mind that colonization will create its own modifier, so to speak. Tons of land, math massive growth potential, etc. It will attract migrants by the internal logic of the system. The entire purpose of having these systems is to move away from gaming modifiers for every little thing. So, yeah. Um, there is no kind of gaming modifiers, but the system itself will think, oh, there is a province over here across the water that has massive potential if we put people there, so therefore people will go there, sort of thing. That's how I read into it anyway. Um, 
will migration interact with culture and religious conversions? Uh, not with culture. There's no, uh, unfortunately, no cultural minorities, which is unfortunate. Um, maybe in the future, who knows? Uh, but there is religious minorities, and that will be handled in another dev diary. Um, and I think the last one um, is here. He says, again, no cultural minority. Class movement is mostly driven by economic factors. And uh, then, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. That's all of the interesting stuff that I found in this dev diary. I'm still incredibly excited and I cannot wait to get my hands on it. It looks phenomenal. And I hope you agree. And uh, I look forward to having it on my channel and having you all watch it and it'll be great. So anyway, I want to thank you all very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, please do let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I do read everything. And um, yeah, what do you think of this dev diary? What what is the thing that's got you most excited here? And uh, I would be very interested to know. Personally, for me, it is population migration. Having a population for, uh, migrate from Thraki to Constantinople, for example, I've, I've wanted that for a long time, and it looks like now we're getting it, so I'm quite excited. Anyway, that is all from me for today. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.